hey guys welcome back so this tutorial lecture video is going to relate it for the numpy okay and uh, in this lecture i'm going to use jupyter notebooks okay but uh, you can use anything but for uh, let's get started before starting with numpy let's see what we need to do so to install numpy you have to do something like pip install numpy okay so this will install the numpy dependency to your default python interpreter okay so actually i have already installed this thing with the help of anaconda so i don't have to install it again so i'm going to open up the jupyter notebooks okay oops it's notebook so it is opening right now okay it will create a server here you can go away from the anaconda setup okay you can go and open your anaconda software and from there you can also open a jupyter notebooks okay so there is no difference from both okay i'm just going to opening the jupyter notebook directly from the terminal okay so both things are same but uh, let me tell you about let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see much better here so let's first create our new python jupyter 3 notebook okay so the notebook is created and let us name this as numpy tutorial okay so i have named this file as numpy tutorial and uh, so we're going to about learn what numpy is okay so numpy actually stands for numerical python in short numpy okay so it, it actually is a library a third party tool you can think about it like that the power that python doesn't consist of the developers created numpy and it is basically consisting of multi-dimensional array objects and uh, a collection of routines for processing those arrays okay so uh, using numpy it makes mathematical and logical operations way much easier and we perform those operations using only the arrays okay so this lecture uh, is going to explain the basics of numpy and uh, an introduction to matplotlib is also provided in uh, further lectures okay so we can do and we are going to do each and everything practically so that's the uh, one of the better ways so it's one of the best way to, for the understanding okay so furthermore about numpy is that numpy is a python package okay that i have told you and uh, some of the following if i say the operations that we can perform is uh, more other other related to mathematical and logical is uh, related to Fourier transforms. If you are a grad student or if you've done some graduation level mathematics, you know about Fourier transforms. And if you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. Okay. So some operations either related to linear algebra. Okay. We can do have a lot of algebra operations here and random number generations also. So let's do some our numpy operations and uh, we have successfully stabilized an environment for numpy so numpy basically having the most important object which is defined in numpy is an n dimensional array okay or the n d array n d array okay so it describes the collection of items of the same type okay in in python we do have lists that look much same like the and here here but list consists of uh, anything you can put any object inside that okay but in here in in numpy you can only put the numeric values and either the same data type okay maybe the float maybe the integers so, so such like that okay so the items in the collection can be accessed using a zero base index which is as same as the list traversing or the string that we have traversed okay and uh, every item in and ndra takes the same size of a block of memory okay 
and uh, the each element in ND array is an object of data type called D type. Okay, so every object inside the ND array is named or the data type of that object is a D type object. Okay, so let me just uh, get my sketch here for on screen. Okay, just wait a sec. So I got my sketch and let us draw a very basic structure of numpy okay so numpy is kind of you can think like this as an nd array so let's just think about this as an nd array so it consists of an header okay so the header is come here uh, sorry about my bad drawing okay so i'm not using a wacom type here so here we have our header okay so this is the header and uh, any instance here is actually and this header points to some another part on on the of the data type here okay and that also has its own head because that's an object here okay and uh, we do have our head here and then we have a scalar value okay so here we have scalars that's uh, what we can say about uh, the same data type okay in the end array and it consists of the memory blocks like this okay and it goes on since it's an n dimensional array and uh, the thing that differs here beside lists the second point is that and array once created they cannot be changed okay so this is another point here to note okay so let me just clean this the screen and okay so some of the basic differences that we now no and uh, so let's first going to import our numpy okay so now import the package import numpy as np so what does this line means we're going to import a package which is named as numpy as np okay so we are referring a different name here for our for our if i if i say easiness okay so for easiness we are referring it as np okay you can think about it as a different name or the another name of the person okay so for example uh, you can name a person as q only a q letter for the short so you don't have to pronounce his or her whole name so this is the same thing okay so to run this cell here either you can go here okay so it will run this code but if you want to run this code directly from a keyboard what you have to do is press the shift button and the enter button not the enter if you press the enter button it creates a new line okay we don't want to create a new line we have to we want to run this file so to run this press the shift and enter and it will run and uh, after the start is gone okay as you can see a one is placed here so it is the first cell so now this cell is successfully run okay so now let us create our first array so let me assign a variable to it a reference variable okay everything is this reference in python okay objects reside somewhere else and it's a send reference it is a send reference so np.array okay so if i haven't imported it as np here okay just think about that we haven't written this line okay this line but we have just write import numpy so what we have to do we have to write a equals numpy dot array and that's a very long uh, and exasperating task so to avoid this writing here which creates some headache okay so if you're doing a lot of coding that creates a lot of headache because you have to type much more keys rather than np here okay so np dot array to create the array which is same as calling that this array function belongs to which file it belongs to the np module or the np file this array function resides here okay so that's what is happening here okay so let me just create the array so 1 2 3 okay so we have created three elements in this array and let us just print it okay so print a boom now it's printed okay that's our first array created in numpy so if you want to create more than one dimension okay so this is a 1d array 
one D okay and D मतलब if I if I say one and D array okay so this is a one dimension and D array numpy array okay so let's create another array let me name it as again maybe a or let's name it as b a reference variable so np dot array okay then the same square brackets and another square set of brackets comma and another set of brackets okay so one two three then four five and six okay so we have created our end here and let us just print this okay let's just print this b shift enter boom we got our two dimensional nd array okay so that's uh, another array of two dimension okay so if you want to create if you want to create uh, i mean an a, an array using some statement okay so if we are only defining an 1d array and we want it to and we want it to convert to another dimensional array directly so how we can do that okay so to do that let me just create maybe re just change the variable reference here so i'm using b again so p and p dot array okay and i'm going to define the same one two three four five and let's just add six okay and here we can define the dimension of this array so n dim for the dimension okay equals that's two and uh, let's just print this array here okay so print b i'm using python 3 okay if you are using python 2 just go with without these parentheses here so, so just go something like that okay i'm using python 3 in python 2.7 there is no such thing like function the print is still the statement actually those parentheses are taken as the tuples here okay so let's just print this oops maybe i think oh sorry 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 let's just go back to the here it's not and dim it's and dimn and dimensions okay uh now you can understand the problem that we face it oops what am i missing here hmm the print is all right okay let me check this in python 2 okay and uh, let me open up a new terminal uh, let me check it out uh, let me just pause the video here this actually downloading the numpy for my python 2.7 let me check this out this function actually i think maybe there is a problem with the version because i think that they now using one dimension array and two dimension array like statements here okay so let me open my python 2 okay so idle python 2.7 and uh, import numpy as np okay so it is now imported and let's create the same thing here okay so a equals np dot array and uh, two three four five six okay put a comma and and t i m n equals two okay so i think this is the same thing that we have done here hmm this is something different let me just go over here i don't know why it is not running it must have to be run because i have run this thing already when i was learning numpy past two years ago okay so let me just think about it what happened i i don't know what happened but let me think about this function maybe they have changed i think they have introduced some new statements here and let me check about that actually i couldn't find out anything related to this problem this must have to be run here i don't know i checked out my books and my notes but it is not running i don't know what happened 
I checked on my old nodes that I created while running, but now it's not running. Actually, the output must be something like this. Actually, it's going to be converted into 2D. So the output must be something like this. Okay. The, this was the output that I hoped is going to be work here, but I don't know why it is not working. Um, I definitely don't know so I will tell you about this in some later lecture I will find out what's the problem here okay I've checked out in both the versions and I still don't get why it's not running so don't worry about it you know things happen a lot problems occur to a program and if a problem is not occurring to you you're not learning so <laughs> As you can see, over a four to five years of experience in Python, and I don't even, I have even some silly mistakes like this. I don't know why it's not running, <laughs> but okay. So, ah, just forget it. I will tell you about this, what, what happened here. So, let's go, and now I'm going to create um, uh, a new array. Let's just create from this NP array and convert this to a complex array. So, what a complex number is. I will put it in the le later lectures okay or maybe in the article part but i'm not going to tell you what they are if you want to know about complex numbers just go and google it okay and it's still if you don't get anything ask in the q a section okay i will uh, going to also put that after lectures but yeah i encourage you to go and learn by yourself that's the learning that i have opted from many years okay so let's just go and create an np array again okay and uh, here I'm going to create a very basic NP array and let's call a statement here. So we're going to define the D type here. Okay, so we are going to assigning our own D type. Okay, we are going to creating a manual D type here. So every object inside the ND array is a D type. It its object type is a D type. Okay, so we're going to create it X. Mm, complex C O M. okay so now it is highlighted and uh, let me print this here print b okay ah so it is now created to complex number okay so complex number basically represented with a j to the j is is the imaginary part okay actually it is the real part but uh, for calculation thing for doing thing much simpler okay so we created it as a complex number actually uh, let me okay i will tell you so for example if you're doing square rooting okay so uh, square root of let's just think about under root minus one okay so that's not going to be solved easily it i maybe in future we're going to able to solve without using the imaginary imaginary numbers maybe in mathematics everything can be possible but to resolve this problem what they created they create treated that negative one as a complex number here okay so if you know much more about what complex number are i will put an article after the lecture but i encourage you to go on google and search about it so you can learn much more about it but still if you don't have any question ask me okay definitely you can ask me directly so that's what a complex number is okay <clears throat> and uh, now let us create some another let's see some the data types so the numpy actually supports the same as python but here we support also bool type integer type and uh, integer type and uh, there are lots of integer type maybe integer type of 16 bit 8 bit then 64 bit okay so unsigned integer type of 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit 64 bit unsigned integers and we can also have some int c which is actually identical to c int okay normally it is int 32 or int 64 in c language related to two, so we can we can do the mathematical task much easier okay and uh, we do have the same for the float part okay and complex also has is a simple complex and 64 and 122 bits complex okay so we got a lot of options here in, in NumPy, okay? It is very much powerful. So uh, let me tell you much more about the D-types, okay? So we have, as you've seen, that we use D-type here. So D-type basically describes the interpretation, okay, of the fixed block memory, okay? It, it tells about the object. 
and uh, so we're going to use uh, the d type function here okay so we can directly uh, see and understand what d type is okay so this way we can understand the working of d type much more easier okay so let's go create a reference variable as dd and then np dot array here okay and uh, oh i mean i'm sorry it's d type okay d type and uh, let's just put here um, np dot uh, int 16 or int 32 or whatever you want to just check out the d type here okay so a lot of d types here and uh, np dot uh, int 32 okay so let us see what it will show us oh i did it from the print statement okay so put the print statement here dt and just run this so int 32 okay so the output is in 32 which is the d type of this object and p object okay and uh, if we want to create something like uh, let's do the same for dt here okay then dt equals np dot uh, d type okay then parenthesis star, square bracket started then i do have something called let's name it as age okay then comma here and let's maybe you can use anything but let's see what about int 8 okay so let's see what int 8 is and put a np before so we can tell the interpreter that belongs to the np module okay and uh, let's print this okay so print dt shift enter i1 okay so that's the output of this file okay so if we can also do the following example maybe defining a structure data to a structure data okay so if we use something like mm, let me think some about about some example so uh, mm, let us create some Thing related to students so let have we are going to define a data structure a type uh, which is named as student with a string field name it has a student has a name of string type and age which is an integer type and marks in, in float type okay so let us create our d type and named it as student okay so student and np dot d type then parenthesis started and let us create this structure okay so square brackets and let us create our name first so name okay okay i uh, have to put parenthesis here also why i'm just clubbing these things okay clubbing this into one creating something like tuples here okay so name and uh, s2o okay then actually i'm actually creating the the string type it's a d type here okay it's a kind of tupling thing we are assigning this d type directly to it okay so we're going to create a multiple d types here defining multiple d types to multiple objects other variables and uh, let's say h okay so uh yeah put the parenthesis i just forget it okay so h comma let's maybe make it i1 which is int 8 in short okay so i1 then marks okay so we're going to create marks in in floating point okay and uh, let's the marks be marks be in in the floating point okay so for floating point i'm going to use f4 here okay so we created our very basic student structure here and now if you want to see the output of this file put a print here okay so if you want to look what it might look like so student okay um shift enter so this is how our structure is now looking like so we're going to apply this student to an array okay so we're going to apply this to an array so we actually do have our three things we have defined in this d type first the name next the age we define 
the age the age must be of the integer type it must be of string type and it must be of float type okay so we're going to creating our array here okay so let's to create our array and uh, to create the array we have to use the array function here okay so let's uh, name the first student be Dave and uh, its age may be 21 and let's say marks be 50 okay uh, you can see that I'm not using any any floating point conversion but by default it's going to convert it into floating point okay so this is our first object and uh, let well, details of another student so uh, maybe ABC is our another student and let's uh, her age be 13 mm, yeah and, uh, okay 14 and uh, her marks may be 20 okay <laughs> let me increase that to 70 okay so and uh, let me add another student here and uh, let name her to be xyz i don't know who she is but yeah xyz then her age may be 22 and her marks may be mm, around let's say 79 okay and uh, now the part the important part we are now assigning a d type actually we created a d type which is named as student and this d type consisting of various d type also inside okay so these d types let me put my marker here okay now i got it so we created a student d type here okay so let me just zoom in okay and we're going to apply this d type directly here why we're going to apply this d type to all these students detail okay and this np.d type is actually consisting of these kind of tuples here kind of uh, small objects and these objects are actually marks first the name which is assigned as string and the first object here as you can see is a string okay then we have age which is an integer here then we have our marks which is actually going to be converted into float but we assign here it as int okay so that is going to be converted into float by default okay and if i going to use here a floating point it may convert it into int part okay so that's how it is going to work okay let me just clean this thing and let me just out there and now i've added the students details so the type equals student okay and to see the output of this file uh, I write the right new student as T G E N. Oh yeah, it's fine. So let's go and print this. Okay, so print a shift enter. Boom! You got your string. You got your integer, and you got your what I want to say. The marks in floating point. Okay, you can see that there is a point afterwards. Okay, and what are bees? It just telling it's a byte string okay it's a byte array string okay we have learned about this in the our previous lectures so actually it is uh, if i if i am going to say, it may be of a lot of things um it, it uses character coding okay so i means integer then u means unsigned integer and m means time delta okay and uh, actually oh god i i remember s and a means a byte string okay but b means boolean b for boolean oh god i didn't uh, that's because of that function here that created this type error okay so that's what uh, about uh, numpy data tests. and i will put the notes after this lecture so you can refer them much more easy easily okay and uh, in the next lecture in the next lecture we're going to see what array attributes are okay so we're going to see the shapes of the array okay so some attributes that the array function has provided to us okay so we're going to also see how to check the dimension of an array so next part consisting of much more features related to numpy and uh, as always thanks for watching bye